what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The lucky householders whose homes are heated with hard coal are enjoying steady, uninterrupted, healthful warmth in every room. Even when winter winds blow and the temperature dives to zero, there's no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir, when you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you're the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite, the home heating fuel that never fails. And remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Thing in the Cave. The ancient, fabulous city of Cairo. Bertram Fordyce, a British businessman, and his attractive wife are hurrying through the narrow, dirty, cobblestone streets. Come along, my dear. Come along. What on earth the hearty, Bert? It's that feeling again, Lucy. That frightful feeling that someone's following us. It's no wonder in this beastly city. Dark, narrow little streets. and squalor everywhere. I should be very glad to get back to London. America is where we're going, my dear. If I can't shake off this illusion of being followed everywhere. Oh, it's just Cairo, Bert. You always had this feeling when we're here. Worse this time, Lucy. Much worse. Bert, look. What is it? It is old man. He's coming towards us. He's just an old beggar. Let's get behind me, though. Master! Master! Here you are, old boy. Here are some coins. I do not want your money, Master. Only one moment, your priceless time. Take the money and get out. Get out of our way. Hear me, Master. Have ageless wisdom for your ears. What do you want? A secret, Master. What secret? The secret of El Castab. How did you know about El Castab? Reveal secret El Castab to him who asks, Master. Let us get by. Tell him secret. Get your filthy hands off me. Get me so, will you? Tell him secret of El Castab. Oh, by Allah, you will be struck down by death. Watch yourself going down the gangway, darling. It is a bit of relief, isn't it? After all we went through in Cairo. Now you can forget all those things about being spotted. Prophecy of the mad beggar. Yes, I, I, I'm sure this will be a very pleasant holiday. Here we are. Now, if we can find our luggage and get to the customs. We'll be just in time to have a drink before supper. I think this calls for a bit of celebration. Bottle of wine, perhaps. What's the matter, darling? Look up there. Where? Up there. That man standing by the rail, smiling down at us. Uh, he's the man, Lucy. He's the one who's been following But he us. couldn't have followed us all the way across the Atlantic. But he did, he did. But you can't be sure. I can. Look what he's carrying in his hand. He's always had it before, and he's got it with him now. Did you see it? Why, he's... He's carrying a cage. <laughs> That's the whole story, Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane. I know it sounds fantastic, but it's true. 
You say you've seen this, uh, this mysterious stranger three times since you saw him at the dark, Mr. Fordyce? And each time he's just standing there with that large cage in his hand, smiling. I can't stand it anymore, Mr. Cranston. I've simply got to have someone's help. You're convinced that he's the man to whom you're to reveal the secret of, uh, what was it? El Castab. Oh. Yes, I'm sure he's the man. Well, Mr. Fordyce, you haven't yet told us just what the secret of El Castab is. I don't know, Miss Lane. That's the mysterious part of it. El Castab is an old fortress on the edge of the African desert. You don't know of any secret in connection with this fortress? No, none. I see. Well, perhaps we better start at the beginning. You say that every time you've seen this man, it's been downtown, somewhere near the importing center? Right. Oh, can you be more specific? Well, come to think of it, I guess it's always been on or near Market Street. Mm-hmm. All right, come on, Margo. We're going to Market Street? There are a couple of Egyptian importers who have shops on Market Street. One of them might be able to give us a lead to Mr. Fordyce's mysterious stranger. It's been almost two hours since we started pacing up and down Market Street. <laughs> I guess it was a pretty thin hunch. Looking for a mysterious stranger in an importing district. Especially when every other man looks like him. What is it? Every other man may look like a mysterious stranger, Margaret, but the man who just came around the corner fits Mr. Fordyce's description to a T. He does, doesn't he? Tall, dark. The man of Italy. Look, he's carrying that awful cage. Back against the wall. Bring that shop across the street. What do we do? Get across the street here, quickly. Stick close to the wall and approach the shop in the other direction. Ah, here we are. There's a sign hanging over the door. El Tamir, importer, New York and Cairo. I'm now going to rush Mr. El Tamir and see who his friend is. Oh, oh I... Yes? Not here in my shop, then. Can I help you, please? Why, uh... We were just looking for someone. A friend? Oh, not exactly. Oh, we were looking for a tall, dark gentleman who just walked into your shop. You must be mistaken, sir. No one has come in here for past half hour. But we just saw him come in. You must have seen him. He was carrying a large covered cage. A kid. <laughs> there are many importer shops in the district. All very we couldn't have been mistaken. Uh, perhaps we were this time, Margaret. Oh, mod- as long as we're here, I see you have some things for sale. A modest local business, in addition to my importing. Well, I'd like to buy some perfume. Uh, something light, I think, not too heavy and must. Yes, of course, I have just the thing for Madame. Uh, it's uh, not for the young lady. No. no, I want it sent. You ship things out of this country, of course. It's such a small item. This should be very simple for you, Mr. Tamia. I want this sent to a friend who lives just outside of Cairo. Outside Cairo? And the address? Address it simply Bertram Fordyce, El Castab, Egypt. What's the matter, Mr. Tamir? You've broken in since, Bernard. My hand slipped. Or was it your tongue that slipped when you said you didn't see the man with the cage come into the shop? I did not. I swear it. I did not. Why does the word El Castab frighten you? What do you know about that place? Nothing. Nothing. I said, what do you know about El Castab? I. All I know is that there was once great treasure hidden in the fortress there. Great treasure? When was it hidden there? During war, just before Marshal Rommel swept across the desert. It was hidden there so Germans would not find it. Where is this treasure now? I do not know. I have heard nothing about it since I left Cairo five, six years ago. I see. Well, Mr. Tamir will be going now, but I don't think this will be our last visit. You are always welcome, sir. And the next time, perhaps we will both know more about the secret of El Castal. Sit down, Bert, please, and try to get hold of yourself. Oh, why doesn't he call? Why doesn't he let me know something? Well, I'm sure Mr. Cranston is doing everything he can. Everything, everything. He's wandering around looking for Egyptian importers while I sit here and wait for that smiling gentleman with a cage. Bert, you've told me a hundred times that there's no secret of El Castor. If you've nothing to hide, you've nothing to fear. No, 
No, I suppose not. You never tell me the reason for all these trips to Egypt. Business, business, Lucy. I've told you that before. But we have had rather sudden bursts of wealth over the past few years. Was there money hidden in the Dark House Tower? Money? No, no, no money. Lucy, believe me, there's nothing I can tell you. This is something different. Something I can't escape. I feel as if the very shadow of death were creeping up on... What was that? There's someone knocking at the door. Were you expecting anyone? Not that I know of, but... Lucy. Don't go, Bert. Lucy. Don't go. I have to, Lucy. I have to see who it is. Good evening, Mr. Fordback. It is you. Yes. It's I. Go away. Go away. Aren't you ready? Ready? To tell me your secret, Mr. Fordyce. The secret of El Castab. Lucky you thought before Mrs. Fordyce after you'd have to shop. Yes, she sounded worried. Frightened. She said that man with the cage was there at the house? That's what she said, Margot. Here we are. Oh, I'm so glad you both come. I'm almost out of my mind. Seems to be the trouble, Miss Fordyce. That man, he's back there in the study with Bert. Come on, Margot. They've been arguing violently. It's been getting worse and worse. You're trying to stop them. I can't get in the study. No one can. Bert had a double lock put on the door just to be safe. Um, Come on, listen. No, no, please. Got to get in there fast. Up these stairs. Here, quickly. They lead to the roof. There's a studio skylight. We can get in that way. We're not too late. This door leads right onto the roof. There. No, no. Get Here's the skylight. Listen. Get it off me, I tell you. I can't see through the glass. Get He's fighting with something. Oh, There's something around his throat. Skylight's stuck. We'll have to break the glass. Something strangling him. Stand back. There. Oh, look, Lord. Look down there. Good Lord. Lying there on the floor. His neck. Who's this? Just dying there. There's nothing in the room. Nothing. We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. Friends, is your home heated with a type of fuel now hard to get? If so, I'd like to ask you three questions. One, would you like to cut your fuel bill in half? Two, would you like to be sure of plenty of fuel for steady, uninterrupted, helpful warmth in every room of your home? Three, would you like to continue to enjoy the convenience of fully automatic home heat? I am sure your answers are all yes, and there is only one way these things can be accomplished. Switch to hard coal and install an automatic stoker. At current price levels, stoker-sized hard coal will cut your fuel bill in half. Stoker sizes of hard coal are plentiful. And enough can be stored to carry you through the severe part of the winter. Modern, efficient, fully automatic stokers are available right now. And they soon pay for themselves in fuel savings. With a hard coal stoker, the fire is fueled automatically. And ashes are removed automatically. The helpful, even coal fire warmth is automatically controlled by a thermostat in your living room. The blue coal dealer in your neighborhood can give you full information about stokers and installations. It will pay you to call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. Now, back to the shadow. Margot and Lamont, in an effort to learn the secret of El Castab, have trailed the mysterious man with a cage to the home of Bertram Fordyce but arrived there only in time to crash through the skylight and find him dead. It is a short time later now as Margot returns from quieting Mrs. Fordyce. Ma, she's all right now. She's in the room in the Any lead? The mysterious gentleman with the cage apparently escaped through the window here and fled down the alley. Did you hear what Fordyce was shouting just before you broke through the skylight? He said, get it off. Get it off. Yes, 
thing the cage must be an animal of some kind. Animal trained to kill, obviously. Strangle the life out of a man on command. A monkey? Chimpanzee? An ape, perhaps? Perhaps. What? Might even be some kind of a bird. Bird? Yes. Marks on Fort Isis' throat could have been made by claws. Both Egypt and Africa produce wild, vicious birds that can be highly trained. And again, it, it might be... Might be what? The marks on his throat might have been made by sharp scales. Scales? Oh, a mark, not a snake. Oh, Lord knows what terrible thing is in that cage. I do know that we've got to stop this thing, whatever it is, from doing any more killing. What can we do, Lamar? Our important friend, Tamir, knows Egypt, Margot. I think he also knows a great deal more about that mysterious stranger than he admitted to us. You're going to see Tamir again? Yes, Martha. This time, as the shadow. Good evening, Tamir. Monsieur Constantine, you should not have come here to my shop. There have been people here asking about you. We will talk in your back room, Tamia. Yes. This way, quickly. To the sliding door. There. Now we are at least out of sight. Why have you come, Monsieur Constantine? For dice. He is dead. You killed him? So bad it is. Is the same. Then you have the map. No, Mr. Fordyce said he did not have it. I did not believe him. I let Subar the cage to rain the truth from him. Still, he would not confess. His last gasping breath was that the map was no longer in his possession. Not in his possession? Then where could it be? That is exactly what I would like to know, Samir. You don't think that yes, I... Yes, Samir, I do. They also think that you are going to give me the map before I leave the shop. But I do not have the map. I swear I have it. I want that map, Tamir. I have traveled across two continents to get the treasure of El Castab, and I intend to have it. But I do not know where it is. Give me that map. Please, Monsieur Constantine, please. Give me that map. Please. Please do not hit me again. I do not have the map. I swear it. Very well. Get up. Get up! You believe me? Perhaps. I took some papers from Fordyce's body. Perhaps the map was among them. Yes, of course. The map must be among his papers. Amir. Yes, Monsieur Constantine. I'm going to return to my room now and look through those papers. And if I do not find the map there, I shall return. But... And if I do, Tamir... I shall open this cage. And you will meet Suba. A quiet, deadly Suba. Face to face. Yes, what can I do for... The front door opens, no one comes in. I saw the door open. There is no one here. There is someone here, Tom, here. Yeah? <laughs> that voice. Who's laughing? The customer is coming to your shop, Tom, here. Yeah. Who are you? This is the shadow. <laughs> what do you want? Information, Tom, here. Yeah. Who killed Bertram Fordyce? Well, Tom, here. Yeah? I... Monsieur Constantine. And who is Monsieur Constantine? A foreign gentleman who is searching for treasure of El Castab. He carries large covered cage with him. The thing in cage killed Fortis. What is this thing in the cage? I do not know. I have never seen it. It kills. That is all I know. But you do know a great deal about the treasure of El Castab, don't you, Tom? Here? No. I do not even know where treasure is hidden. Treasure is not hidden in the desert, Fortis? It was. But for I move it across desert, it was hidden again and again. And now? Now it is buried somewhere in Holy Land. Holy Land? Yes. That is why it must be found quickly. Every day the Holy Land blazes with more fire and revolt. I see. 
Where is this Constantine now? He went back to his rooms. There were some papers he took from Fordyce. He is looking for map among them. Where are his rooms? The Hotel Metropole. Very well, Tavier. Thank you for the information. You serve your customers very well. <laughs> To return. You've come back here after what you did to my husband. It's not the visit of my choice. I shall call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Get out of my way. The time is of the essence, Mrs. Fordyce. I will be brief. I want the map of El The map? It's not among the papers I have in my room. Papers I procured from your husband's body. I can only conclude it's hidden somewhere in this house. I will have it to you immediately. You will hang for that. I'll see the... The map, Mrs. Fordyce. The map. I... All right. Follow me. Here in the study. The Fordyce has a secret drawer on his desk. Quickly, Mrs. Fordyce. It's, uh, it's here somewhere. Oh, yes. This is what I was looking for. What? <laughs> I should have expected something like this. You may put the revolver back in the drawer. I think not, Mr. Constantine. I very much think I shall need it. You see, when Bert said that the map was not in his possession, he was telling the truth. I had the map. I take it your husband's death was more of a convenience. And a tragedy, Mrs. Fordyce. Precisely as your death will be a convenience, Mr. Constantine. My death? I hardly believe the American police will be too curious about your sudden demise. It's all very easy. It is not. It took some planning and a bit of acting. So simple you might almost say it was a snap. Yes, Mrs. Fordyce, a snap. <laughs> Suba, Mrs. Fordyce. I left the cage open for just such an emergency. Suba, respond instantly to my command. Yes, Thank you by the early Margot. Someone might see us in front of the shop. Did the shadow talk to Tommy, Lamar? Just left him. And? I have to work fast, darling. Mr. Constantine's probably in his room at the Hotel Metropole now, looking for the map of the treasure of El Gustav. And you're going there to find him? Shadow is. What do you want me to do? Constantine knows that Tommy doesn't have the map. He just left his shop. Yes. Yeah. So if by some chance the map isn't at his hotel, he'll be back to see Mrs. Fordyce. So you want me to warn him? Yes. Have a meet you at police headquarters. I'll take care of it. While you are, the shadow will be taking care of our elusive friend with the case. Mrs. Fordyce was resting when we left. She must be still asleep. I've got to warn her. Maybe if I knock. Still it up. Mrs. Fordyce. Mrs. Fordyce. I hope nothing happened. Mrs. Fordyce. Good evening, young lady. Oh, it's you. Dark clothes. The cage. And you, my dear, are familiar to me. Weren't you with the inquisitive young man who crashed through the skylight? You'll never get away with that. I see. But I don't believe I can say as much for you. You have no reason to kill me. You think I am stupid enough to let a witness to two of Suba's crimes for unattended? I'll, I'll scream. I'll make someone hear me. Only a very short scream, my dear. 
Suba is very quick. Suba? Yes. Some believe Suba to be a kind of bird. Some believe a reptile which lies coiled behind those bars, ready to strike. Others swear that I carry with me a small, fierce ape. Suba is none of those things. Don't open that cage. It's none of those things. As you will see for yourself when I open the cage like this. Oh, no. No! Yes. It's a human being. Yes, my dear. A human being like you arrives. Only much smaller. And a great deal stronger. Get it away! Suba is a native of the Niger region of Central Africa, where pygmies grow very small and very fit. Get it away! You don't like Suba. He's not very attractive. But he's quite intelligent. He speaks a few words. Suba, speak. Speak. You, you, you. Not a large vocabulary, but adequate for our purposes. You, you. Now, Suba, to work quickly. We wasted much time. You, you. No, get it away. Get it away. Get it away. What was that? Thank you. Voice commanding Suba. Who is in this room? Kill. 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 Suba! That's you! Kill. 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 I'm speaking, but I hear a voice. Kill. Kill. Get away from me. Get away. <laughs> now, Constantine, you know for a fleeting instant the terror of the unknown. The terror you struck in the hearts of your victims. Tell me, please. Whoever you are. You carry the cage of death, Constantine. Now you will find yourself caged. No. No. And you'll remain caged, Monsieur Constantine, until time for your execution. Let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority, John Barkley. Thank you, Andre Bruce, and good evening, friends. Many people think we're having an abnormal winter. The United States Weather Bureau, however, reports temperatures so far this winter are just about normal. So you can expect this kind of weather any year. And government ex- experts tell us, too, that we can expect a continued fuel oil shortage for a number of years. So the suggestion made earlier that householders now using other types of fuel switch to hard coal is really a very sensible one. With a hard coal stoker, you have your home heating problem late. You'll save up to 50% of your fuel cost, you're sure of dependable home heating, and you'll have all the conveniences of fully automatic heating and temperature control. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) Ha, 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 